Um, so the last section here, the phenomenon interacts with the person, right? It interacts with us. So this is again, um, the kind of very scientific perspective that people that, you know, that the researcher wants to take on that it's objective, that we're just kind of victims to this alien contact. And yet the phenomenon is highly personal. It interacts with the person. In fact, um, I can not see, I can tell how often in a person's contact that the alien will mention something maybe personal to the individual. So it's just very wild how, how personal that the, uh, the contact event can become. Um, and so this was kind of a weird, you know, uh, sorry, an analysis of those kind of similar elements between me and Susie. Um, the events, significant events happen at similar ages. Uh, Susie's big experience uh, that starts her into this, um, you know, direction in life, if you will, is the event that she has uh, when she's 20 years old and it changes her life. And it's the event with which she sees an orb and you're with a friend and you've, you've kind of gone very public with that. Um, and you had missing time and then you were very disturbed uh, about the whole event and your friend wanted to shut it down and didn't want to talk about it ever again. And uh, did you want to say anything more to that? Um, yeah, this was the, the wake up moment. It's the first chapter of my book. And um, the, our car was um, basically followed along a line of hills by a light that eventually came over the car and um, lifted our car off the ground and we were taken on board a, a large triangular craft. Um, so yeah, it's, it, was, um, st it was staged, it was meant to happen. Uh, I somehow had an inkling that something was going to happen because when my friend picked me up from a farm gate where I'd spent the day with family friends, um, and he told me we're going to go home on the back road, which was a very remote uh, country highway uh, that n not many cars were on except farm vehicles. Um, my stomach lurched and I had a, a, a feeling of um, precognition, if you can put it that way, that something was about to happen. So uh, it was a staged event. It was meant to happen. And it was actually a few months, four months after I'd had a horrific car accident and had to sort of get myself back on my feet in time to begin my first year of teaching. And they took me on board craft and did some alterations to me health wise that, to help me cope with um, the chronic pain that I was suffering. So it was a very interesting and personalized event in what took place. But my memory of it as a, as a human, as a young woman, after I came back down in the car in the darkness and wondered where the afternoon sunshine had gone and what had happened to the time in between was traumatic. And I think that was also intentional because I'm a curious person and that trauma that I suffered from this event um, spurred me on to finding other people in New Zealand who'd experienced similar and really set me on the path as a sighting investigator and a contact researcher. Yeah, fascinating. And and there's just something, you know, these are, the aliens would know this, right? These are significant moments in our own lives. And they seem to do things at similar ages for other contactees. And so for me, my rising happened when I was 20 years old also. And uh, and that kind of developmental time where we're able to digest, uh, you know, something very odd and strange and take personal responsibility and have a level of maturity about what happens to us. And so we were both 20 years old when something very, you know, shocking and traumatic actually happened to both of us that was related to the phenomenon that would alter our lives, that would paint, that would put us in a direction that we we would be forever be able to hold on to it and come back to it as the kind of moment that with which everything changed. And uh, so very fascinating. I also found another contactee who was 16 years old the first time he went into a craft. And I thought, well, that's really weird too, because uh, though I had childhood contact events, my whole thing starts at 16. And so it sometimes seems like the aliens are very aware of the ages that people are at um, and with the develop the developmental stage we're at with which to interact with us and start providing us uh, with certain types of experiences. Um, both me and Susie have genetic bonds to the entities, and that is a significant uh, part of my story. And uh, and I feel like that will be a very significant part of the future uh, with uh, humanity as we get more information about this. By the way, I think that we're all alien genetics, or, sorry, alien hybrids. I'm convinced of that. 
and that certain of us have a uh, certain species or certain sorry uh maybe races if you will have augmentations of that and uh and then the aliens the in the present moment the aliens are actually adding more and they're kind of kind of shifting and changing things uh but um but i definitely proved to myself that i have gray alien genetics and that's a part of my story and i continue to say that publicly um so we have uh, Dr. Gary Nolan now publicly saying that he has studied the brains of and seen, no, I think he's seen uh, medical information of the of people who've had interactions with UAPs and how the brain has changed in regards to the phenomenon and how the, what happens when you know a human interacts with this with these the, this tech or these devices, and uh, and now I have um, uh, uh, in my book my whole thing is. Well, what, okay, that's great. We have the brain. Now, what about the DNA? What about the human? What about the individual body? Um, because if your brain is going to be affected and you have a person now going on to contact, uh, going on to craft uh, repeatedly, then we are definitely going to have body changes as well, too. And I provide uh, a bit of science um, where I try to point out, listen, something seems to be going on here because my, my DNA changed and that was the big part of the picture. And uh, fascinatingly enough, Susie also experienced a kind of similar ex description that I had, a body full of light and having pronounced joy in the process. And uh, that was a very significant element of my own contact events, um, that the rising was this kind of culmination of all that. And I had it outside of the craft. And that's what was a big, significant part of the rising. And it's just a very pronounced experience you don't get as a human. As a normal everyday human, I don't think of a single person I've ever heard of the words, a body full of light and having pronounced joy. Uh, and yet as contactees seem to be having these experiences. And I am always leaning back towards a genetic change that happens on the craft. Um, and, uh, you know, a genetic activation, if you will. And I use a lot of science to say that that's, I'm certain that's what's going on is a genetic activation. And then we're having these after effects from it all. Um, so, Again, very fascinating stuff. And uh, this is the last line of the presentation. <clears throat> it's a very important one. So Susie is this, you know, trailblazer, a trailblazer. Susie, you're a trailblazer. Uh, <laughs> I'm very grateful for your trailblazing. Um, and this line is such a significant part of her book especially as a contactee. And I hope if you're a contactee or an experiencer, you can relate to this information. So she says, there seems to be the attitude out there that many experiencers, abductees are not capable of expressing, analyzing, presenting, or commenting on their own material. U.S. abductee Cheryl, Sherry Wild, author of The Forgotten Promise, rejoining our cosmic family, summed up this attitude when she stated in a speech synopsis, the alien abduction topic is one filled with lots of speculation and conjecture by the UFO investigators. Most of the analysis is being done by those who have never even had a contact experience themselves and can only form opinions based on what they hear and observe from the actual participant. It will be crucial in the future that the general public sees an increasing number of experiencers speaking for themselves, as this will have a significant impact on public awareness of the reality of these contacts and of the extraterrestrial presence. Great. So thank you for participating. Thank you for being here, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeff Selber. Uh, please, uh, you know, uh, I, these are our stories and uh, you can purchase my book at www.jeffselber.com. My book is The Rising and the Alien Plan to Build an Enlightened City on Earth. Please leave an Amazon review, as I mentioned earlier. And Susie Hansen, thank you so much for being part of my presentation. Absolutely, absolutely grateful. By the way, people, Susie helped me so significantly with the book. And uh, she was just, you know, just, uh, I can't, I just cannot say enough about how grateful I am. And uh, and her work is, uh, you know, people are going to look back at this stuff. And, uh, and Susie is a trailblazer, an absolute trailblazer. And uh, so please buy her book. I think at one point, Susie, you, you and me both mentioned, if people buy both of our books, they're going to get a great uh, understanding about the alien presence that is, you know, on the planet and kind of what's to come. So, um, yeah, thank you, Susie, as well, too. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah.